handsome, I'm fast, I'm pretty, and can't possibly be beat. I'm a poet, I'm a prophet, I'm the resurrector, I'm the savior of the boxing world. I am the greatest. You know, there have been many throughout history that have claimed to be amazing in some way or another. And just like Muhammad Ali said, I am the greatest, many others have boasted about themselves, saying I am the smartest or I am the most powerful. But before any of these people had a claim to greatness, before any of them had a chance to boast about who they were or what they had done, there was the one person who simply said, I am. His statements of I am, his statements of who he was, were like no other. They pointed to himself, describing his very character and essence, and he is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the bread of life. He is the true vine. He is the light of the world. He is the Good Shepherd, He is the Watcher of the Sheep, and He is the Resurrection and the Life. He is the I Am. Hi, I'm April. And I'm Brian. And we are Team Matthews. Today you're going to hear an awesome word at Gagabe Church. Thank you for tuning in. Amen. All right, this morning, we're already coming from uh, Luke 22. Um, I'm going to be reading verses 56 through 58. Oh, actually, I'm going to read 56 through 60. All right. Um, and this is, and, and if you've been in church for any period of time and you've heard about the resurrection of Christ, you probably have at least heard this story. But we're going to dig a little bit into it, maybe from a different angle you weren't ready for um, I, on the screen is the New King James Version. Uh, whatever version you got will work, but you can read along, follow on up there. It says, And a certain servant girl, seeing him as he sat by the fire, looked intently at him and said, This man was also with him, but he denied him, saying, Woman, I do not know him. And after a little while, another saw him and said, You are also, you also are of them. But Peter said, Man, I'm not. Then after about an hour had passed, another confidently affirmed, saying, Surely this fellow also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are saying. Immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. So we bow our heads as we uh, pray over the word. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for bringing us into the house this morning, God. We thank you for this opportunity to hear your word, to dig into your word, to study your word, God. I ask that in this moment right now, God, that you would just let your Holy Spirit do its work in this place. That as the Holy Spirit begins to do work, God, that I would decrease so that you may increase. That I've made room in my heart so that you can do the work this morning, God. That as you fill me up with the word, God, that it will pour it out to those around me, God. I ask this morning that everything that is said be a word from you, that it be useful to their lives, God, that is something they can apply and that they hear a message from you this morning, God, knowing that you are true, you are real, and you are here for them, God. So I ask all these things in your mattress and mighty name. Amen. All right. You guys can have your seats. <clears throat> oh, you turn them off? All right. Oh, that's... I'll deal with that later. All right. So... Here we go. I, I always get up here and say I'm nervous, and then everybody says, yeah, right. But I, I promise you, I am nervous to be up here again, especially talking about when it is good to lose and, um, and what goes along with that. So the, the opening scripture this morning, if you're not certain, I'm going to give you a little bit of backstory, is from when Peter denied knowing Jesus, right? And it says that Peter denied him three times. So... Um, this is a scripture where he actually, this is part of the scripture where he actually denied Jesus to the people who were saying, hey, aren't you, weren't you with Jesus? And he's like, no, that wasn't me. Hey, weren't you, I'm pretty certain that was you that I saw with Jesus earlier. And he's like, no, 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 it definitely was not me. Kind of like, man, that was not me. And they're like, it's definitely you because you're from the same place and y'all look the same. And like, you you're you're definitely was with them. And he's like, no. And then the rooster crowed, right? And today we're going to be talking about being a loser versus a learner. And so we got to kind of set the stage 
for what that means. So I'm going to go back just a smidge, if you bear with me. I know this is where the opening text was from, but to give some backstory, uh, I'm going to jump back in the chapter to, to verse 31. So it's still Luke 22, and I'm going to go back to, to verse 31. And I'm just going to read from my Bible. You can follow along with yours if you have it. I did not put it on the screen, right? Okay. Slides got to be messing up. All right, I did not put it on the screen, but I am going to read it right now. It says, I'm going to read 31 to 34. Uh, it says, Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift each of you like wheat, but I have pleaded in prayer for you, Simon, that your faith should not fail. So when you have repented and turned to me again, strengthen your brothers. Peter said, Lord, I am ready to go to prison with you and even die with you. But Jesus said, Peter, let me tell you something. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. So Simon and Peter, that's the same person right now. He's talk, Jesus is talking to him and they're in the garden. And Simon is pretty much saying, like, I'm ride or die. Like, I'm ready to go, Lord. I'm ride or die. I'm here for you. The people were coming to get Jesus. He's been betrayed. This is right before he's crucified. He's taken away and crucified. And so... Peter is saying to God and, and uh, sorry, he's saying to Jesus, same thing, but he's saying to Jesus, I I'm with you. I'm ready to go to prison with you right now. I'm ready to die right now. And Jesus says to him, not only are you not ready for that, before the rooster crows tomorrow, you will have denied me three times. All right. So Jesus has predicted that Peter is going to deny him. So everybody say he getting ready to take a L. All right, so Peter, in this situation, is getting ready to take an L, a loss. If we don't know what an L is, there's dubs and there's Ls. Ws mean wins. Ls mean losses, unless we shift that today. Keep that in mind. All right, so Peter's getting ready to take a loss. Now, he said, God, I got you. I got your back. I'm ready to go right now. Actually, he, I mean, he had a sword. And if you read in the story, he actually was willing to attack. He cut a man's ear off. He was ready to roll what he thought he was, ride or die. For Jesus. And then when they took Jesus away and Peter was following behind and trailing and standing in the area, that's where we run into the opening scripture today where they said, hey, aren't you the person that was with Jesus? You're one of the ones with them. And actually in the account in John, they said, no, my friend was the one whose ear you cut off. I definitely know that you're him. And he's like, man, I'm not him. And so the significance of that opening text where it says immediately while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. So I just read a little bit of a scripture from 31 to 34, and I said, he's getting ready to take an L. The moment the rooster crowed, he realized that he had taken the L. Does everybody get that? All right, so if we went a little further in that verse, he says, um, and Peter left the courtyard weeping bitterly. So after, Jesus, after Peter had denied Christ three times, and the rooster crowed, and he realized what God had said would come, actually came true, what Jesus had said to him came true, he... he he left the courtyard weeping bitterly, right? He took an L and he ran off crying because he realized that he was not ready in that situation. He thought he was ready, but he wasn't ready in that situation. And so he, he took an L. Say he took an L. There you go. All right. So we're, <clears throat> we're kind of setting the stage for loser versus learner. All right. We're talking about being a loser versus being a learner. And so Peter, in this instance, is faced with a loss. And what happens after the loss is what determines if you're a loser or if you're a learner. All right, so we got to know what those two things mean. A loser is a person or thing that loses, especially consistently. Um, it's a person who is incompetent or un unable to succeed, or it's something doomed to fail or disappoint, meaning from the start, it was not a good thing to get into because it was already a loser. This that bet was a loser from the start. Um, a person, sometimes we refer to people as losers, and we mean they don't win ever. We think they consistently are losing. And sometimes we may have even felt like a loser, right? Maybe, I don't know what the situation is, but you get into, but you just feel like you can't get it right. All right, and the world tells us that we have wins and we have losses. There's winners and losers. Somebody won, which means somebody lost. And we're, if it's competition, if it's situations and circumstances, oftentimes we have wins versus loss. All right. A learner, though, is a person that gains knowledge or understanding of skill. Sorry. A person that gains knowledge or understanding of or study skill in by study, instruction or experience. Sorry, that sounds 
I was, I was losing a little bit. I had to learn halfway through that sentence. <laughs> All right. All right. So it's somebody who is gaining knowledge, understanding, or skill by study, instruction, or experience. I underlined the word experience because today we're talking about experience. Being learners in the situation of having had gained experience. When you experience a loss, do you respond like a loser or do you respond like a learner? Okay, and so we got to understand that you gain experience by engaging in things. And sometimes when you engage in things, they don't work out the way you want. But that doesn't mean that you're a loser unless you let yourself be a loser. Because you could be a learner if you gain some skill, understanding, or knowledge from the experience that you had. A person that has, uh, a learner is also a person that has come to be able, someone who has come to know or someone who has come to realize. So it also might be that you did not know before, and now you do know. Amen. So you could learn to dance. You could learn to play the piano. A learner learns, they can learn to sing. You can learn to count. You can learn to add. I got small children in my family. They can learn to multiply. And sometimes it feels like they can't learn to multiply, but they'll get there, right? Doesn't make them a loser because they lost the multiplication battle. It only means they haven't yet learned it. So they, have the, they went from not knowing to knowing. That makes you a learner. <clears throat> Let me get off my notes already. Wrote the notes and I just jumped right past them. All right. So how can it be good to lose? Right. Um, when does a loss become a failure? Uh, and, the, and it really has to do with your mindset. So we're talking about wins and losses and we're talking about learning versus losses. The world tells us that we have wins and losses. All right, it's win or lose. The situation is a win or lose situation, whatever you're in. If you're in a relationship and you went through a breakup, did you win or did you lose? Right? If you're in a game and you're playing a basketball game, did you win or did you lose? And the world often, it's very cut and dry. You're either a winner or you're a loser. You're a success or you're a failure. And the problem is that's not how God operates and not how God sees each of us. Because simply in a game, like in basketball game, there has to be somebody who wins and there has to be somebody who lost the game. But does that mean that one team is full of losers? Like in the sense of like a score, perhaps, but not in the sense of being actual losers. Are you incapable? If we go back to that definition of loser, are you somebody who's always failing? You're somebody who's incompetent, incompetent and unable to succeed. Just because you lost the game doesn't mean you lack the ability to succeed. It just means you lost that game. So you're not a loser unless you let yourself stay as a loser. The world tells us it's win or lose, and I want you to start to shift your mindset. The difference between the things is what you're going to be doing with your mind, right? Because you lost the game. The score, the score is the score. You can't change that, but are you operating in a loser mindset or a learner mindset? Because it should go from win, lose, to win, learn. You either won and you can learn when you win too, but you either won or you learned something from that experience. Now, learning something from the experience comes from within. Are you paying attention? How are you treating it? Did you hang your head in, in, in defeat and just say, I'm a failure, I cannot succeed? Or did you take something from the experience? I coach wrestling. I feel like everywhere I can get up and tell you I coach something. I, I, last, on Wednesday, it was, uh, it was track, right? Coach track, I coach wrestling, I've coached golf. I'm a parent, so I got to coach my four kids all the time just in, in just general stuff. Fix your face. Coaching them right now, right? So <clears throat> the reality is, like, I see kids who consistently experience wins and consistently experience losses. And see, one of the things I coach my wrestlers on all the time is a loss is only truly a lost situation if you did not learn from it. And we talk about sports and competition. There's always going to be a bigger, better dog somewhere. There's always a bigger, better dog somewhere. And if you face the bigger, better dog, it's possible that you take a loss in the, in the sense of competition. But see, what did you learn during the, during the experience? What did you get better at? What did you see? What happened? What was your mindset when you came out of that? So I have some athletes, head is hanging. <sighs> And, it's, and it's, it's a mindset of like, I can't do anything right. I cannot be successful. But see, God didn't create us to hang our heads and think that we can't be successful. 
He did create us to learn. He did create us to be mindful. He did create us to dig into his word, to find solutions, to endure through it. One of the, I mean, one of the fruits of the spirit is long suffering, right? So he, he created us to be resilient, to be strong enough to make it through to the other side. And then sometimes we need some help and he should be that help. It says we can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So like sometimes we have to lean on him to give us the strength, but God created us not to be losers, but to be learners. And it starts with your mindset because losses are going to come. Whatever the loss might be, it could be death. Somebody could die. You lost a person. And it sounds weird. Like, what, what could I possibly have learned from the loss of a person? I, a lot. See, you won't know until you actually flip your mindset. You won't know until you ask God, God, what can I learn from this situation? Whatever it is. I, I can't tell you what it is you learn from situations because I'm not God. Sometimes I'm struggling in the closet asking the same question in my prayer closet. God, what, what is the lesson that I should have learned from this? How? How did I need to learn a lesson because my son burned himself on the stove, not paying attention? Right? Like he should learn a lesson. But see, sometimes that's a pitchfork situation. That's where you take the lesson and pitchfork it onto somebody else. Yeah, that was for you. But see, it, it's for all of us. Sometimes losses occur and we got to take our win-lose situation and turn it into a win-learn situation. And see, God has taught us that when we learn something and we grow, then we are winning. And so we've taken our win-loss to a win-learn and now it's a win-win. Yeah. And so all situations become win-win situations when you got God on your side. On, yes, right. Philippians tells us I can do all things through Christ. Right. It also tells us that um, all things work together. Right. That's Romans. All things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. And so all things includes losing. Sometimes losses happen and losses can be used for the good of Christ, for the good of his people, as long as you attack it with a learner mindset and not with a loser mindset. So what does a loss do? Because like we've all experienced a loss and sometimes it's really rough. Like, <laughs> like it's not easy to lose. And if you're like, I'm really competitive. My wife's really competitive. Sometimes we're really competitive with, with, with each other, unless it's badminton, which I just crush her in. <laughs> Don't worry, she kicks my butt in tennis. It's real embarrassing too. I'll be trying so hard. <sighs> all right, anyway, I just admitted that in front of everybody. So just know, I've never admitted something like that before. All right, God, see God. I'm learning. I'm learning. Right. I'm learn. I learned from that loss. All right. Um, so when we talk about a loss, sometimes when we experience a loss, there's some things that occur. It exposes some things in us. And oftentimes we don't like that. The, the word itself expose usually has a real negative connotation. Right. Nobody wants to stand there feeling exposed. Right. So it exposes our deficiencies. It exposes our unpreparedness. It exposes immaturity and it exposes fear. So oftentimes when we experience a, f a, a failure, a loss of some sort, whether it's a loss in a game or a loss in a situation, um, I, I don't know, <sighs> anything, get your job, something, you, you lost your job, right? You lose your job and now you feel exposed for maybe some inadequacy, some deficiencies, and, and, and I don't know, maybe you just feel embarrassed because you're in this circumstance where you have lost. And oftentimes that exposure is the, the feeling that like makes us feel bad about losing. And then you feel like a loser because of this word expose, right? You feel exposed. But I, wanna sh I want you guys to shift. See, because losses come. Losses happen. You might lose a job. It might have been your fault. It might not have been your fault. You may feel exposed and embarrassed. But what mindset are you attacking it with? Because right? you got that, that shame feeling, Ugh, don't even look at me. What happened? I don't even want to talk about it. Right? I'm embarrassed. What happened with that thing that's going on? What happened with your kid? What happened with that argument that you had? What happened with your coworker? What happened? Uh, man, I saw you the other night, and you was just two sheets to the wind. What happened? And now we're standing here because we lost in a situation, and we feel exposed. See, but a loser mindset stays with exposed. We want to think about the loss, not about how it exposed you, but what did it teach you? 
So when you experience a loss, we got to shift our mind from feeling exposed, even though that may be what occurred. What did the loss teach you about your deficiency? What did your loss teach you about your immaturity, your unpreparedness, or perhaps your fears? See, sometimes when you experience a loss, it's teaching you something if you just look for the lesson. But we got to be looking for the lesson. You're taking an L one way or the other. It can either be a loss or it can be a lesson. But the L is going to come because loss happens. So what did I learn from this? See, because a lot of times we take a loss and it's about immaturity. I wasn't mature enough to handle the situation I was in. And if you don't learn from that or at least identify the situation that, that, that was so immature, then you can't even make an adjustment and so you end up back in the same pattern. And we always see this in, and I'm gonna pick on something that I don't have any, re this is relationships. We end up with the same cycle in relationships. Man, I keep dating the same type of people over and over and over again. It just seems like it's always the same thing. It might be the same job. You might be running into the same problem with your kids. I was talking to my wife the other day. I always, man, when he makes me preach, I gotta stand up here and I always end up talking about my own business and everybody knows all my business. That's how I feel. <laughs> Right? <laughs> right, exposed. That's how I feel, right? We exposed. What did I learn from this? But I'm talking to my wife. We're talking about our kids because that's one thing. We got four children, and we're both learning how to parent together. We have a blended family. There's a lot that goes into this in the conversation. But like a lot of times, we're saying like, what? Like we took a loss on that one. But how can we learn from it? What can we do better the next time? Was it how I said it to my kids, and that's why they missed it? That's something we were just talking about the other night. Like. Um, my, my kids missed the lesson because the tone I used wasn't right. And I can't figure out why they're never getting the lesson. And also it's because I keep using the same tone because I'm angry. Right. But maybe if I taught the lesson from a different standpoint, with a different tone, with a different attitude, then maybe they would hear the lesson. Doesn't mean they would always get it right. But I'm not even giving myself a fighting chance unless I start learning from my losses. And some of that comes from my own immaturity. Right. I haven't matured enough to to just squash my emotions about the moment and handle what I need to do as a father and handle what I need to do as a husband and handle what I need to do as an elder in the church and handle what I need to do as a person at work. Whatever the situation is, you got to start paying attention to it. Why am I taking this loss? What is the lesson that can be learned? Because if you stay as a loser in your loser mindset, then that's just what you'll be. But see, if you're a learner, then you're going to win. And God didn't intend for us to stay as losers. It's crazy because we read the Bible, most of us, some of us, a few of us, <laughs> a, a, a lot of us. I was, I was joking mostly, I hope. <laughs> All right, we read the Bible, we read the New Testament. We believe in Jesus. Jesus came to earth. He was God. He sent his son for us. And then what did Jesus spend the entirety of his life doing? Teaching, right? He walked the earth teaching us. If he's a teacher, then we should be learners. They called him teacher. See, Jesus took a bunch of disciples, a bunch of a bunch of losers. And he started teaching them. They made a lot of mistakes. He found he found half of them on a boat fishing poorly, losing, not even catching any fish. He found a bunch of them floating on the water. That's what he found. They're supposed to be fishermen, but they were not doing. It. He said, come with me and I'll make you fishers of men, right? And so he took them and started teaching them. And where they were losing before, they became learners. And once they became learners, they started winning. Now, that doesn't mean they didn't face or find losses along the way. I'm talking about Peter right now having a loss. He, went, he walked with Christ everywhere he went. He followed him. And then at the last hour when Christ was being taken away, Peter is experiencing a loss. He's experiencing a loss in this moment because he's denying Christ. Christ told him he's going to deny Christ. He said, you're going to deny me before the rooster crows. He gave him a warning and he still did it because we as fleshly human beings, as fleshly beings on this earth, we don't always get it right. I told you I coach the number of times that I've told an athlete that they're getting ready to take an L because they haven't been preparing and then they go out and take an L and they come back looking at me like, I don't know what happened. You don't know what happened? Because I spent all week telling you you've been practicing like crap. 
You haven't been running. You ain't been eating right. You haven't been doing the things you need to do. You haven't been studying your playbook. You haven't been studying your opponent. You haven't been doing the things that you need to do to be successful. And now you took a loss. Are you going to lay like a loser or are you going to learn from it? Are you going to learn from it? And it's all about preparedness. See, Christ came down and started teaching. He walked with the disciples. He gave them all kinds of stories. He, he gave them parables. He gave them experiences right in front of them. He healed people. He blessed people. He gave people grace and forgiveness. And he did all of it right out in view so they could see it. Are you learning? Are you paying attention? Are you getting ready to take a loss? And then once you take the loss, what are you doing with it? Because L's will come. But are they losses or are they lessons? <clears throat> So the outcome of the situation cannot be changed. You got to get your mind around this. Sometimes a loss happens. And you can't change that. You lost the game. Can't change it. But what you can do is your mindset can change. And see, the difference is not that the loss is not there. The difference is how you respond. The difference is your attitude. The difference is your mindset. The difference is your response. The difference is the words that you use, the things you say about it. Am I speaking the word of God into my situation or am I just telling myself I'm a loser? And see, it's got to start with you first. You have to believe that you're the head and not the tail. You have to believe that you're above and not below. You have to believe that in all things, Christ will strengthen you and you can make it. And once you believe that, it won't even matter what anybody else says. We hear stories about athletes. Let's take one of the greatest athletes ever, Michael Jordan. Uh, I always hear the story, he didn't make his high school team, right? He failed. But you, you got to think, like, did he stop there? No. He went further, and he kept going. And so it's not that, so, like, somebody told him he wasn't good enough, and he could have stayed and been a loser, but instead he worked harder and harder, and he learned from his mistakes, and then he ends up being arguably one of the greatest basketball players ever played. Amen. And that's just, I just picked one. I don't start no arguments in here, no LeBron versus Jordan arguments. <laughs> Just saying that people oftentimes that we hold in high esteem for being successful, we think they got there without losing. And that's not the case. You didn't rise to success because you never faced failure. You rose to success because you didn't let a loss stop you. You didn't. You, it's not that you didn't face failure. It's that you saw failure, ignored it and kept learning anyway. I refuse to be a failure in this situation. I am a learner. I'm not a loser. I'm going to keep learning. I'm going to keep moving forward. So whatever situation you're running into, start to flip your mindset. <clears throat> I already gave you Romans 28, 28, so the Holy Spirit already pushed that one out there. My bad. <laughs> All right, hindsight is 2020. We always say this, right? It's the same. We got hindsight is 2020. And it's crazy because... Like hindsight is 20. Well, what does that mean? Hindsight is 2020 means that if I had known then what I know now, I would have made a better decision. Right. right? If I had known then or known then back then what I now know, I would have made the right decision and I would have been able to avoid that loss or that failure. But that like that doesn't always work out like that. I got a little experiment I'm going to try here. We'll see how this goes. I'm using a child, so I might be learning a lesson. Come, come here, Caden. My son, listen, I brought these chocolates out here, and he already he had them in his hand. I don't even know why he had them. Take a step back. Take a step back. So all you do, pick a hand. There you go. Oh, man. He, he saw the chocolate, and he sees the $5 bill. <laughs> so he's like, what do what, you think right then? I only thought there was a chocolate. And he's like, man, dad, I think you got me up here in front of everybody to trick me. And I'm not happy about it. <laughs> Hindsight is 2020. See, if he knew what he back then, what he knows right now, he would have made a different decision. He may even the thing is he got chocolate. Sometimes you, you won. You still feel like you lost because the thing could have turned out better than you had expected. But in reality, he likes chocolate. He wanted the chocolate the whole time. He didn't even know there was five dollars. Hindsight is 2020. Yeah, I got it, but you can't go back and change it. What are you going to do with the information? So here we are. Same thing. Which hand are you going to pick? Don't think you can't mess this up. Pick the hand. You know it. Hines? There you go. See? And now 
Thank you, son. You can have that too. Get out of here. <laughs> so he sees the same situation again, and he makes a different choice. And I just gave my kid five bucks, right? <laughs> and chocolate. Woo, I'm just... Winning a win lose into a win learn into a win win situation. Wow. It just happened right in front of you. That pen is gone, I guess. All right. The point being that hindsight is 2020, but if you're stuck with a loser mindset, then hindsight will just be hindsight. Wow. Hindsight is just hindsight when you have a loser mindset. But when you have a learning mindset, hindsight becomes foresight. Wow. So you take what you learned in the past and you turn it to the future. Amen. And we just saw it play out through the eyes of a seven-year-old. I'm not going to make that mistake again. Now, I've seen a seven-year-old make a lot of mistakes at the same time over and over again. It, it's weird. The chocolate and the money, he got that one right on the first. I was really banking on that working. All right, let's go. So here we are. Hindsight is only hindsight, and it'll stay hindsight if you're in a loser mentality. You won't learn from your mistakes. You'll keep making the same mistakes because you're not assessing what is going on? How do we assess what's going on? Sometimes you got to close your mouth. You got to pray to God. You got to stop filling up the air with all of your gibberish and start filling up the space in the atmosphere with this. You got to have a real honest conversation with God. God, what is the lesson I'm supposed to be learning in this thing that keeps coming around? Keep having the same argument in your marriage. Keep, keep experiencing the same situation with your friends. How, 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 how? You know the situation. Are you assessing it? What is that thing that's holding you back? Is it addiction? Is it uh, financial issues? Is it I don't, just unforgiveness? See, when you start asking God the real hard questions and you start listening for the real hard answer, then you're going to turn your loss into a lesson. And then when you learn from a lesson, you're going to go from a loser to a learner. And when you go from a loser to a learner, you're going to go to becoming a winner. Amen. The win-loss becomes a win-learn, which becomes a win-win situation for you because God works together with all things for the good of his people. So how do you handle setback? I'm going to go kind of, I'm pouring some gas on this fire. Here we go. How do you handle us? How do you? So I'm asking you, how do you handle a setback? And now I don't need you to share out to me. I need you to be honest with yourself because all of this work going from loser to learner. It, it starts with you. See, because oftentimes the people stand around you outside you, they like we can see it. A lot of times we can see it. But until you're ready to hear it. Until you're ready to hear it, I'm just wasting my breath. Wow. I, it, 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 Listen, until I'm ready to hear it, you're just wasting your breath. So I'll make it about me. I don't need to come down to anybody's aisle and step on your toes. But how do you handle a setback? The reality is you got to make the decision to make a change from loss to learn. All right. So a lot of times that loser mindset, when you have a setback, sometimes we sit back or sometimes we take a step back. That same story with Peter and the disciples, and Peter having had denied Christ. See, I told you that Peter took an L, but we got to get to the end of the story where Peter experiences the learning and the victory, right? Because we know it doesn't end right there. He was acting like a loser for a second, but he's going to get it right. All right, so that's the, that's the positive side of the story, right? I said, how do you tell losing is good? All right, so in this situation, it says, um, this is in John, John 21, um, Jesus and the disciples have seen Christ. He's been resurrected. He's appeared a couple times to them. And now this is another situation where they, uh, they're all talking. And Peter was supposed to be leading. And this is where they're at. He says, later Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there. Simon Peter, Thomas, Nathaniel, uh, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were there. And Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat, and they caught nothing all night. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, fellows, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. So here we have a situation. Peter experienced a setback, right? I failed, I failed Christ in the sense that I'm embarrassed because I denied him. He told me I was going to do it. I did it anyway. I'm embarrassed. I ran off crying because I'm upset. I experienced a setback. They took our Savior. They crucified him and he died. And I'm experiencing a setback. And so what did they do in that moment? 
they took a step back. And see, I told you when Christ found them, they were fishing for fish. And then he turned them into fishers of men. And then the moment that Christ died and they experienced a setback, they went right back to the thing that they were doing before. They took a step back. And see, a loser mentality will have you taking a step back. It'll have you backslide the moment you experience a setback. Or it'll have you sit back. That's where you just sit back. I don't even know what to do. You throw your hands up and you do nothing in the situation, like sit on a boat all night and catch no fish. So they took a step back and they were just sitting back and they're missing the lesson. And then guess what? Because he's our savior, our Messiah. Here comes Jesus on, on, on the shore. And he says, hey, did you catch anything? And then they say, no, no, we didn't catch anything. Yeah, because you're fishing for the wrong thing. You went back to fishing for fish when you were supposed to be fishing for men. That's what I told you to do. You took a step back as soon as you experienced a setback. But the learner takes a, a setback and they find a way to get back. You got to get back to the back to business, back to the grind, back to the thing you're doing. Take that lesson, learn it and get back to it. Or you take it as a setup. You experience a setback and you use it as a setup, a setup for the next thing. I experienced this. I, I experienced uh, a, a loss of a job. How am I going to get back? How am I going to use that experience as the setup for the next job? That's what a learner is going to do. That's your mindset that's got to shift. All right, so it said, after breakfast, Jesus asked Simon, Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you know I love you. And then Jesus said, then feed my lambs. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep. And then a third time he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, then feed my sheep. See, there's significance to the fact that Jesus, that, that Peter denied Jesus three times. And then Jesus came back and he asked Peter three times. And see, Peter's being reinstated. He's giving a chance. God's giving him grace in this moment. He's saying, if you love me, then feed my, then feed my sheep. Take care of my flock. Stop sitting out here on a boat going back to the things you used to do and do the things that you were supposed to be doing the whole time. See, just because you experienced a setback doesn't need you, mean you need to take a step back. It means you need to take a step up for the setup for the next thing you're getting to. See, because after this, this was in John, it's like the very end of, of, of the, the four books, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. And then right after that, it goes into Acts. And now we got Peter, who's a leader in the church. And our pastor often talks about us being an Acts church, right? And so the church booms. Right? They start spreading the gospel. The disciples spread out. They start spreading the word of God. And there's an uptick in the people who are coming to church and knowing Christ. And that happens at this point because of the work that they are doing. They took their loss and they turned it into a lesson. And because they learned from it, they were able to get the victory to bring us forward into what is the church now. You've got to take your win-loss and turn it into a win-learn so that you can turn it into a win-win situation. Can you give me some music, please? Whew. <clears throat> All right, only, only 20 more minutes. Just joking. All right, so <clears throat> the learner, uh, this is just, I'm going to move on from this slide. You can see it. I'll, I'll leave it up there. The learner knows that Jesus is the great redeemer. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. This is Ephesians 1, 7. I'm not going to go past it. It's up there. Go All right. Knowing that <clears throat> God, and in this case, we're speaking about Jesus being our redeemer. He redeems our time. He gives us grace. He continues to offer us salvation. Right. He allows us to take our losses that we experience and turn them into lessons, to learn from them and have that learner mindset that will allow us to move forward. See, Jesus took a bunch of losers, and through teaching them, he turned them into learners. And they all had different levels of success and victory as it came to that. Uh, J Peter, we just talked about Peter. Peter was, 
a bit of a hothead. Um, he was always ready to fight, I felt like, when I, when I read the stories of Peter. Um, but really, God started working on it and took a man who was a fisher, who was struggling, I think in debt, and he turned him into somebody who was leading the church. And see, we often say in here that God doesn't call the qualified, he qualifies the called. See, when he called him, then he was able to qualify him because he was using him. And so because Peter said yes and showed up, even though he experiences losses along the way, he continued to get victories in the end. He's not the only one. Uh, John, John and James, the, the sons of thunder, right? John has a temper. See, but then when John, by the end, he's responding in love and patience. See, because when something didn't go his way or didn't go the way he thought it should go for Jesus, like they was ready to tear up. Like, we'll fight and tear up for you, Jesus. And he's like, no, that's not the way. But see, by Jesus being the example, He's the redeemer. He's the person that shows the grace. He's the person that leads the way. He's the one that's teaching us the lessons. And if we're willing to be learners, then we'll be winners. <clears throat> we always offer a little challenge. And I'm not going to make, I, I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to issue you a specific challenge. The challenge is for you to make your own challenge. Figure out, it's like, like a teacher, like, your homework is to make your own homework. Like, come on now. I'm going to ace this homework. But let's be, let's be real. <laughs> let's be real about what you're doing. The challenge is to identify your own areas where you've been acting like a loser, and it's time to start acting like a learner. And now notice, I said I was worried I have to come up here and call everybody losers. I'm not calling anybody in here a loser. But sometimes we act like a loser. You act as though you are a loser. And I'm saying identify an area where you might be acting as though you're a loser and start acting like a learner. And see, it doesn't take much more than one. Well, it, it's turning to God. That's the first thing. And then, and then you just got to make a plan for what you're going to do. God, I'm going to pray to you. And then you got to listen. How can I get better in this area? What is the thing I need to learn? What is the, like, help me find in the Bible the area that I need to work on. If you got a sharp tongue and you speak crassly to, to your spouse, to your kids, to your coworkers, and that has been tearing down your relationships, God, help me figure out how to solve this thing that's going on in my life. Wow, what an amazing word, April. Yes, it was. And we would love for you to partner with us in our giving. And here is how you can give. Two, give. Say yeah, Agape Church, it's tithes and offering time. Agape family and friends, great news. There are three ways that you can give cheerfully in the house of God. We encourage you to partner with us to advance God's kingdom to go further and farther into many people's lives. The first way you can give is number one, give by phone through cash app, dollar sign, love like him. Number two, give at www.lovelikehim.today. Click on the donate button and follow the prompts there. Lastly, number three, you can mail in your charitable givings to P.O. Box 948, Have It a Grace, Maryland, 21078. Agape Church would like to thank you for your charitable giving today. And we pray that the Lord will shower you with his choice blessings. Thank you for joining and participating in our Agape Church Sunday morning expectation service virtually. We're so blessed that you chose to tune in. We pray and believe with expectation that you received a word from God for your life today with revelation unto your transformation. If today's word inspired you in a special way, we would love to hear from you. You can connect and reach us by phone or email. Text Need Prayer, new member, one info, to 443-640-7491. You can also reach us via email. Prayer member or info at lovelikehim.today. 
We look forward to connecting with you real soon. Remember, you're invited to join us for our Midweek Momentum Bible Study every Wednesday night at 7.07 p.m. That's Momentum Bible Study. Join pastors Vincent and Yvonne Austin and others as we come together and study and mature in God's holy word. We hope to see you there 7.07 on Wednesday nights. God bless you and have a great Sunday. And remember always to love like him.